Perfect. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you, Mike, for taking the time uh, and coming on and, and talking to us about, uh, you know, the fitness uh, fitness area and, and things like that. I know the kids would be excited to to get your expertise. So thank you very much. No, appreciate you having me. Glad. Look forward to uh, doing it. Just gonna, just going to ask you a couple questions, you know, um, just, I mean, obviously in this precedent time with COVID-19 and all the stuff that's going on, how kids, you know, kids can and athletes can stay in shape and just some different things, um, you know, that, that might be interested interesting for these kids. I guess the first question that I have, um, you know, with the competition level being what it is nowadays in regards to, um, you know, I think kids training, starting to train at such a younger age and trying to get film out there and trying to be, get the competitive market. When, when is a good age do you feel to, to start lifting weights? And the, the, what I'm seeing is a lot of times is, is uh, these young kids, 13, 14 years old in the weight room, and they're already pounding out the heavy weights. And, and I mean, that's a lot of wear and tear in your body at that young age. And I just, we, I want to try and give kids the information that, you know, I, cause I think sometimes they're misled in, in those type of things. We, I've always been a big believer in youth strength training. Um, I think the problem you get is uninformed and un, uneducated people out there that uh, they're getting information might, might not be great information off the internet, off YouTube and try to mimic that you know, as they're growing up, it, hey, if it's a 10, 12 year old and they're doing body weight exercises, and it, that's great to me. Uh, resistance training with body weight flex bands, actual weights in hand, that's all great. It's just a matter of doing it smart, uh, doing it progressively, trying to do more reps than last time and using safe, safe rep ranges, you know, maybe eight, 12 reps or 10 to 15 reps. I think the problem you start seeing is when kids start getting in competition with each other and try to do maybe a one rep max that they're not prepared for, whether it's a a clean or a bench press or something like that, you start getting ugly form. That's when injuries really happen. So really they need to have a pro I would say proper supervision, proper coaching uh, as best as possible. Um, You know, when I was in high school, I I worked out with a gentleman, Danny Joseph, who always, you know, was on top of his game. And I worked out with a professional soccer player from my hometown. So it was kind of a good mix. Uh, as well as my brother, you know, so it, it, there's always somebody there that knows and has a good solid background in it. It's just a matter of reaching out and getting that information. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't have, if you look at g- a recess for elementary school kids, those are kids that are running, jumping, That that's plyometric in nature, you know, so get out and do plyometrics. You can do that all day long. My, my biggest thing is do it on the right surface, get out on grass field or, or a turf surface, I've seen some coaches uh, at camps doing plyos in a parking lot on, you know, an asphalt. That, that's not the way to go. There's a field right next to it. Use the grass, you know, so. And that's, part, that's part of the problem, right? And those are the questions. That's that's why I asked the question I did is that you see a lot of these, I don't want to say cockamamie ideas, but there are a lot of them where they come on and they say, hey, let's try this, let's try that. And it's, you look at it and you go, man, I'm not really sure that's a real safe way to do things. If he slips or falls or someone's going to get seriously injured. And, and it's crazy because kids see it and they think that it's cool or it's, it's, Hey, I can do this or, and, and, uh, you know, unfortunately a lot of times kids end up injured or, or set back in, in their development. And unfortunately you get some, I'll say uh, large publications or large networks that will tweet out something that they see that a pro athlete did that's kind of funky. And you're like, no, like, don't do that. You know, it's, it's, it's not the way to go, you know? And, and I, I always use the, uh, the, um, the, the story of a, there's an NBA basketball player that was using a stability ball for, I believe a, a dumbbell bench press. I could be mistaken. Anyway, the ball blew up. He got injured. There was a lawsuit. The NBA, if, if I'm correct on the story, the NBA put a kibosh on, utilizing those stability goals for it it's not made for that just know the equipment you're using know how to use it properly progress at it there you know age age really doesn't matter strength training can benefit uh you know kids of all ages really and whether that's like i said body weight just if they're young kids perfect the body weight exercises push-ups chin-ups all day long you know body weight lunges squats now, now you with you being in, in the fitness while well, being an expert in the fitness area and doing what you do um what do you feel the, the best fitness plan for athletes, like in regards to lifting slash cardio? Um, you know, not obviously not every day, but how long do you think a, a beneficial workout is in regards to weight training slash going out doing cardio and different things like that? 
it depends on the time of year. I've done anywhere from like a four day split routine where you might do upper lower Monday, Tuesday, and again on Thursday, Friday. Um, three day total body workouts, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mixing and conditioning on those other days. I, it, you know, obviously in season with a lot of sports, you're looking at about twice a week, depending on the schedule, if you can. And you're probably, you know, for in season strength training, I'd say 30 minutes to 40 minutes tops from start to end, you know, off season. I'd say our guys are in there for an hour uh, at a pop, but, but it's work time. It's not a lounge. It's not sitting there in between sets doing this, what you and me are doing right now, BSing, you know, we're, we're just oh, working. Absolutely. But what you see a lot of times is these kids go to the gym and they're in there two and a half hours. And I'm going, man, like, you know, you're a young kid. Like yeah. when I used to work out and, and Bill Hogarth was a pretty knowledgeable guy, I'd get in and out in about, you know, 120 and then I could get a yeah. full workout in and, and about an hour and 20. And, and I was exhausted. I'm leaving. I'd say that's, that's about the longest we we would go with anybody in the off season, maybe an hour and 15, hour and 20 from start to finish. And that includes a, a proper warm up and a static stretch at the end using flex bands. But, you know, other, other than that, you're kind of, it, it's, you're either overtraining or you're, or you're not working hard enough. You know, it, it's kind of like the, the, you know, am I going to go out and run sprints or am I going to go out and jog? Well, I can jog for a long time, but if you're in the weight room doing sprints, working hard at your sets, you're not going to be in there a long time, you know? You don't need to be in there a long time. I know, I know in our practice that we used to do, like I, it, back in the day, people used to run tons of 40s and tons of this at the end of practice. No. We, we've kind of tweaked our practice and, and, and did a much now higher intensity practice where we build all of that sprinting and, and, and stuff into our practice. So when we change drills or when we do this, we do it at a very high level for, you know, about 15, 20 seconds. And then, boom, we go to the next thing. So I'm not spending the end of my practice for 20 minutes running up and down the field. And you know what, Glenn, that's probably – you're probably ahead of the curve on a lot of that because there's a lot of coaches going that route. Coach D'Antonio was big on that, just having a high-intensity, high-tempo practice uh, so the kids are getting their conditioning in. Working basketball for all the years I did with Coach Izzo, it was the same you know, same thing. He's – it's a high-tempo. It wasn't – you didn't ever have to line up on the line to, to run some sprints. You know? What I found, obviously, is kids would just save it. Save it. They'd, they'd have a half ass practice and they'd save it. Yeah. And then they'd be able to run the sprints at the end and, and, you know, they'd be finishing out strong or, and you're just going, well, yeah, that's great. We had a terrible practice, but we ran sprints great. Yep. No, absolutely. And I think there's something to that psychologically. Like if they know they don't have to run sprints, they're going to practice harder for you. Like you said, you know, that they, if you, you sell it that way, they, they will buy in for sure. But, you know, going back to a conditioning standpoint, like in the off season, like at this time right now, Hey, anybody can go find a field, you know, a find a field, find a, a patch of grass, a track, whatever, to get out and do some sprint work, some interval work. That's the way. I don't care what sport you're really in right now, other than I'll say marathon running or cross country running or long distance swimming. Uh, more more team sports are anaerobic in nature, where you're going to be doing a lot of interval sprint work, and that's that's probably the best way to go. But you can get out and do that. I tell my hockey players, hey, get out and find find a hill. You know, we have a few hills around here in town or where you're living. Find a hill, do some hill sprints do some plyos, you know, uh, that, that stuff, you don't need a gym for that. No, oh, absolutely. And that, that kind of leads to my next question. Obviously with the situation everybody's in nowadays, what can athletes do at home? Um, obviously a lot of kids don't have a home gym, right? right. They don't, they don't have access to a, a great workout facility. Let a lot of these guys do it either at high school or they have memberships at different places, but you got to kind of utilize your, your stuff you have at home or out in the neighborhood. Like what are things they can be doing to, to stay in shape? We, we've provided our athletes here at Michigan State uh, with a, lot, a number of different workout plans for those with home gyms, whether they have bars or dumbbells or just body weight workouts. Uh, but anything that's any, anything that you can lift up and put down, that's resistance. So milk jugs, you know, I know you, we got the milk bags in Ontario. We have the milk jugs, <laughs> yeah. gallon jugs over here in, uh, you know, in Michigan. But cinder blocks, you know, our, our, some of our players, uh, uh, have done it. You know, one of our incoming freshmen, or one of our football freshmen, uh, Justin Stevens. I think it's Joe Thomas's nephew. If I'm okay, I'm yeah. yeah. Uh, just he's from Halifax, and he's got a video on YouTube. He's doing lunges with a bar set up. He's got four tires on each side of the. He's a know, big. So, yeah, I met that. I met that young yeah. man. Big, yeah. But you got you got to be innovative. You know, and and think like, okay, wait a minute. What about you getting in the front seat of your car, putting the car in neutral and tapping the brake while I'm in the back, back outside pushing it, you know, you can go and find a parking lot 
empty parking lot anywhere. I mean, you're getting some sled work in that way. You know, Neil, big offensive lineman, he was, uh, he had two tires and he had a bar and he had the tires on and he was bench pressing and squatting with yeah. the bar, tires on the bar. And I, he also has a video on YouTube right now. He was towing his dad's truck um, in neutral on a big yep. long and he was doing stuff like that and he posted it and and uh so it's great to see those type, you know those kids doing those type of things and, and stuff like that what one of our guys took a truck uh bed you know the the hatch in the back put it down he was using that as his box for box jumps now be careful you're not beating the crap out of your legs you know skinning yeah. your shins but he also used it he also laid under it and grabbed it in reverse and was doing a inverted row body weight row on it you know so there's you just got to look at the movement say okay what can i use a backpack full of books load up a gym bag full of textbooks you know there there's weight for you you can carry that any which way you want and do lunges with the, it and squats i think one of the biggest things too is, is is there's always a way if you're dedicated to doing what you want to do and they and get where you want to go yep absolutely i mean hey if you if you have a brother or a sister and you're working out together there's your resistance. You can push on each other, pull on each other, lift each other up, carry each other, you know, get in a piggyback and do squats with each other on each other's back. There's ways to get the job done. You know, I know, uh, I know you're not involved in football anymore at Michigan state, but you were at one time. And one, one quick question I wanted to ask you for these young kids, how important is good film? Good film. Good film is, is probably the, uh, the initial kind of foot in the door. You know, as soon as if I if I get film, usually we'll we'll get mass copied, you know, a mass email sent to our staff. And I the odd time I might look at it, and you know, and if I look at it, it's like, oh, you know, if it's a if it's an eyebrow raiser, I'll say something to our recruiting recruiting team and they'll look at it and then they go from there, you know. Um, but film is usually the one and in trust I'm, I'm older, so I'm not, you know, I'm I'll say I'm familiar with Twitter. But, yeah, I think a lot of these kids are tweeting out their film to get coaches to look at it. Uh, that's probably one big thing. Coach D'Antonio is always big on having the kids come to camp uh, in the summer and be seen because they want to see you in person and see yeah, how absolutely. you move. Film, film can you can kind of okay. What who's this kid playing against? Is it really good competition or is it weak competition? You know that that doesn't always tell the full story, but that might get the foot in the door and then getting on campus uh, to these camps to let the coaches see you in person kind of how you size up against other kids in camps. That's another big one. Yeah. Okay. And, that, and that's great. That's, a, and that's what we tell our guys, right? I mean, obviously you guys are experts in your field, these guys that, I mean, the MC2A and stuff. And, and uh, I mean, they know what good film is and, and what good yeah. film is. It's hard for us. Sometimes we get parents that, you know, they believe is good film. And I go, listen, I, I can't send this to a division one football coach because he's going to laugh me out the door and I won't be able to send him any other film. Like, he, right. You know, it's kind of crazy. I mean, especially, and it's getting even younger and younger and younger now um, because of the competition level. I mean, I got 13 and 14 year old parents who were coming to me saying, Oh, you know, I want you to send this stuff away from my son. And I'm like, Hey, how about you just have your son have fun? I, I I'm, I'm with you on that. Have fun. And you know, ultimately if you're good enough, some, someone's going to see you and someone's going to hear about you and find out about you. And you know, that's kind of, and you can say that about any sport really. And I'm, no, I'm always absolutely. been a big believer. I tell, my kids that, I tell my kids that all the time. The problem we have here is I, we've had a tremendous amount of success with kids playing at the next level, both in the United States and Canada and, and, and in the NFL, CFL. And, and now they believe every kid is going to get a scholarship or every kid is going to play at that level. And I, and I, you know, it's something that I got to constantly kind of, I don't want to say squash, but it's something that I got to kind of tone down every right. single day because we lose focus on, on, the game and having fun and, and you know because that's i mean ultimately that's what this is about is about having oh fun. hey i i i've seen athletes and regardless of sport i've seen athletes come to come here and you know if they if they lose that enjoyment it kind of saps them you know and they can it, it's uh you, you have to have fun with it you have to really enjoy what you're doing you know and embrace and embrace I hate, I hate the word grind. It's just, it's a long story, but I, I just hate it because I think it's used yeah. about everything, but you got to embrace, embrace the process of the work ethic and putting forth a great effort. You know, to me, to me, grind is my grandfather working on the line, you know, in Windsor oh, I, I, those times yeah. way back when that, that, that was a grind back in the, you know, the forties, the fifties. Hey, you know what? I always tell our athletes, you get nice gear, nice clothes, great shoes, you get to work out in beautiful facilities, 
and you get coaching, that's not a grind. That that's oh. that's a that's a privilege. You know, it's Absolutely. an honor. Absolutely. You know, so and I think I think people miss miss focus on that part of it, right? They think that yeah. it, you know, like it is a privilege. Anytime I think anytime you get to play this great game, it's a privilege because it, it is a great game. And and you know, it's funny, it took me many, many years to realize that it's a game. Yep. You know, I, yep, I was one is. of those guys for a long time that, you know, I thought the only thing that was important was the winning part of it. And and now I look at it a completely different way in regards to guys getting educations and guys graduating from school and, and you know, and just and just becoming better people. Um, and that, and I think that's the biggest thing for us now is, uh, is, is, you know, is, is just that we have to remember it's a game because not many guys remember it's a game. And, I, I think that's the best part about teaching and coaching when you get, when you get a phone call or an email or a message, a letter from somebody you worked with, Hey coach, you know, you, you made this impact on me. Here's what I'm doing now. I have a family and it. And you know what, that that's kind of when it hits home. It's like, you know what, this is why we do it. And ultimately I, and I, we can, we all get lost in that. And I think over time, um, you know what, right now we're, we're living in the, I'll, I'll call it the, the biggest reset button of our generation. You know, right now with what's going on in this world, I think it puts a lot of things in perspective, you know, and, and hopefully people, uh, you know, understand what's going on and be thankful for those working, you know, for us to on the front line with the healthcare workers and all that, but, you know, just, it, it, it puts it in a perspective, you know, yeah, we talked about that you know, the other day about the crazy time it is right now. And, and again, you know, for me, I, I honestly look at it now and I go, wow, like, it, it, you know, it's it's a great game. But in the real scheme of life, it is just it's minimal. Yeah. Real, and I'm not trying to downplay the game. I'm just trying to be realistic. And, you know, with with the situation, I know even in Michigan, it's it's much worse than it is over here. It's just right. the situation with people dying and sicknesses and stuff like that. It really makes you you know, step back and say, wow, you know, we're very, very yeah. fortunate. And, and I think, you know, I, I saw uh, there was a clip with Magic Johnson being interviewed yesterday on the Today Show, and I think it was, and they just asked him about getting pro sports back. And he made a good point. He goes, it's not so much about playing in front of people, but if you can sit on your couch and watch a game on TV and root for your team, it just kind of gives you a little sense of, you know, relief and, and entertainment and, you know, put smiles on some faces and, kind of getting back to some normalcy in life. And I, I can see where co with pro sports would do that. Even some college sports would do that too. It's, uh, you know, but it is, it is ultimately it's a game. Now, if you, if you had any advice or like one of my big concerns is, 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 is kids nowadays, I mean, the mental health of kids in this situation, obviously, especially athletes, because as you know, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're even probably a little bit, they're probably overly really concerned or, or overwhelmed at the fact they can't do what they want to do. And they probably got a lot of crazy thing going on in their head, like just mental health wise, what would, what is something you would, you know, you would tell your athletes or, or, or your players, you know, just to try and keep them positive. I, you know, first and foremost, I'd tell them, Hey, reach out, call me. You know, if I, I'm a coach, I, I got no problem. Reach out, text me, call me, but I, I want to, you know, make sure they're talking to the right professional. If it's, uh, you know, if they're feeling that down and out, who I really feel bad for a lot of these kids, whether, whether it's high school seniors, college seniors, uh, a lot of them had their end of their school year and the end of their college and, and high school athletic careers yanked out from under them and not being able to sense of closure and the, to end it how they wanted to, to end. I'm not talking about winning championships, but at least playing out the seasons and stuff like that. They haven't gotten the opportunity to do so. And, uh, it's, it's, when you when you when your playing career ends, um, it's kind of like a funeral because it's as, you know as you know it's like it's all of a sudden it's done, you know it's gone, it's like a death in the family, it's gone and and for some of these kids they'll never play a team sport again unless it's rec sports, it's done, it's gone, so they do need to kind of feel feel through that. I, I even say I use Joe Montana, Super Bowl MVP, Hall of Famer, um, eventually at one point in his career it was done for him. And I, and I don't mean he's got mental health issues. I'm just saying, I don't care who you are. If you're a walk on kid, you're a high school, a high school athlete, when it's done, it's over. And you, you have to work, work, be able, be able to work through that. It, it is a, it's a sense of loss and well, more, I, probably I, more so. I couldn't probably, play anything. It was probably very more so from the camaraderie, yeah. you know, in the locker room, anything else more than the game itself. You know, you, you don't, you don't get that anywhere else. And, that, and that's what I'm missing right now, like just missing going out with the kids, with the coaches. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, we, we had a ton of fun. I, I always made sure we had a ton of fun. No matter how hard we worked, we always laughed 
laughing and carrying on and, and you know, and just, and I, I tell you, even myself, I go, man, I'm struggling with that part of it. I can't even yep. imagine being a young athlete, you know, and what they're thinking, right? Where they're, they're probably crushing it. Oh my God, am I going to get to play again and, and this and that. So, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of precedent in times right now. It's definitely okay to talk about it. Talk about it with your parents, your coaches, you know, teammates, friends, uh, reach out, seek a professional. You know, they, there's nothing wrong with talking about it because we're all going, everybody, I, this is the one thing about me. When I first started coaching, I was always under like, I kind of had the attitude, hey, when you walk in that door to the weight room, you leave your problems outside the door and we're going to get going. You know, this is all about work now. And, and that was my mindset. And over time, I think, as you know, we, we grow in our role as coaches and you develop uh, the sense of empathy and you kind of understand everybody has something going on in their lives. I don't care who you are. You know, yeah, and, and that's, that's, just, and that's something okay. I talk about coaches. That we don't know what yeah. these kids are coming in baggage wise every single right. day. Let's yeah. try and make a positive experience. Let's try and make sure they go home in a better mind frame. Than they exactly. Can. Yep. That's a great way of putting it. So, you know what, Mike, again, I thank you for your time. Uh, you know, I, I know you're a busy guy and I thank you. Uh, your expertise is going to be great for these kids. And, uh, you know, again, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I wish uh, MSU all the best in every sport this year. And, uh, you know, if you get, I'm sure at one point, I know. To play again. Hopefully, we're, hopefully we're on the field and the court and the ice and everything else in between, you know, I'm yeah, with you, Glenn. Good, good luck with the Ravens. Too. Again. And, and again, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Good luck with everything. Thanks.